MEC Policy Director James Cliff and Energy Program Director Sarah Mokov give WMU students an overview of pressing environmental issues. The first, to increase Michigan's minimum renewable energy standard and attain a greater percentage of our power from sustainable sources. The second, to urge legislators to ask Governor Snyder to veto the proposed water diversion to Waukesha, Wisconsin. The third, banning net pan aquaculture in the Great Lakes as it threatens the health of our Great Lakes. The fourth, to require inspections of septic systems at time of sale because experts estimate that 10 to 40% of current systems experience problems that could have been prevented by inspection. The fifth, to prohibit the sale and use of coal tar sealant or other high PAH sealants for pavement as several PAHs are suspected human carcinogens and are toxic to aquatic life. In addition to 40 environmental studies and political science students, Mr. Cliff and Ms. Molkov later address a second throng of interested people at WMU's Lee Honors College. All students, faculty, and Kalamazoo community members present at these presentations are allowed to vote on which of these issues they feel are most pressing. After totaling up the results, the winner is the urgent Waukesha Water Diversion Proposal. For the next two months, the students and staff devote an enormous amount of time and energy to fight for this cause. <laughs> to complete their mission, students divide up into groups that each focus on a different area of expertise. The Issues Group focuses on research and information related to Waukesha's diversion and its environmental impacts. Legislative Group gathers political information about all our state officials in Lansing, and the Logistics Group helps organize and coordinate the project and its myriad complexities. Hey everybody, I'm Jeremiah Boink. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, why the city of Waukesha, Wisconsin is applying for a diversion. Right now, they claim that their drinking water is contaminated with radium, which is a radioactive mineral. Um, that can cause cancer, i.e. a carcinogen. They claim that the radium levels in their, in their drinking water are unsafe for human consumption, so they've applied for a diversion for Great Lakes water to supplement their current drinking water supply. Formerly known as the Great Lakes St. Lawrence River Basin Water Resource Compact, the GLC or Great Lakes Compact is a legally binding interstate agreement among the eight Great Lakes states. Each governor must approve veto, or approve with revisions, a proposed diversion. Each of the eight governors must agree to that diversion for it to be approved, and only one veto will prohibit the whole thing. The Waukesha diversion application is the first since the compact was adopted in 2008. Thus, this application is a critical test for the compact, establishing its effectiveness and serving as precedent for the subsequent diversion proposals. The class finds that Waukesha has misrepresented their numbers and other factors, mainly alternatives the city could easily apply to safely treat their water. Diversions are only considered by the GLC when the applicant can show 1. Water return flow 2. The need for the water beyond other conservation methods 3. That no reasonable alternatives exist and 4. That the diversion is without ecosystem impacts. The legislator group is responsible for looking up different representatives and senators in the Michigan State Congress. Our main focus is just looking up background on them, whether it be their political background or previous work experience. Also, looking up how they vote on certain environmentally related issues via their LCD score, and also if they voted on the Great Lakes Compact in the past, which is directly related to the issue we're looking up. My name is Marley Diatiker. I'm part of the Issue Group. The role of the Issue Group is to create a fact sheet. Um, we're focusing on history, um, the impacts that the diversion would cause, and alternatives that Waukesha could use. They don't need the water, and we can't afford to give them the water. With officials from each eight Great Lakes states, as well as from Ontario and Quebec, reviewing changes during a conference call set for May 2nd, this particular proposal is time sensitive. The regional group will gather again in Chicago, May 10th and 11th, to reach a consensus on Waukesha's request. Finally, if they recommend approval of the request at that time, it'll move on to a vote of the eight Great Lakes governors on June 13th in Chicago.
Before all of that, regional public comment on the application review closes March 14th, only a few short weeks away. Students dive into their work, racing against the clock in opposition to Waukesha's diversion. Everyone involved is seriously devoted to Michigan's environmental policy and conservation. All of their hard work is nothing short of inspiring. From the beginning, Great Lakes advocates have effectively framed this debate as a simple yes or no situation, fighting for a no. However, governors of the Great Lakes states remain non-committal. Does this silence perhaps mean a yes, or perhaps a no? Waukesha's current application contains fatal flaws, and public comment is not proving positive. More than 99% of those who registered comments in a regional review explicitly opposed or expressed concern over Waukesha's request to divert Great Lakes water, according to the Regional Body and Compact Council. Jody Habush Sinkin of Midwest Environmental Advocates says, The extent of public concern and outcry shown speaks to how important this first-of-its-kind regional decision will be seen by citizens throughout the Great Lakes region. But with political distractions such as the presidential campaign, its candidates, the political climate in Lansing, and the tragic Flint water crisis occupying lots of media airtime, quote, small stories such as the Waukesha water proposal aren't often covered. Those who follow the issue struggle to keep up to date with important details such as when Grant Trigger, a Michigan representative, pushed for a change in service area during two days of meetings in Chicago that began April 19th. Waukesha's plan to pump an average of 10.1 million gallons a day by mid-century will be trimmed to an average of 8.2 million gallons a day. With an outstanding amount of citizens expressing concern, as well as some politicians scaling back the proposal, we all anxiously await a formal decision from either a relevant governor or from the Great Lakes Compact. With public comment ending soon, students of WMU's Institute of the Environment and Sustainability opt to lobby in Lansing February 25th. They plan to bring their knowledgeable voices to the Capitol in order to persuade hometown officials to urge Governor Snyder to veto Waukesha's proposal. However, after weeks of preparation, Lansing shut down that very day due to a blizzard. This did not stop our persistent and passionate students. Instead, they wrote letters and called every state senator and representative, staying active and involved from Kalamazoo all the way up until public comments closed. Just as one never knows what may happen in politics, Michigan weather is unpredictable. Seamlessly transitioning to Plan B demonstrates how organized and confident our students are. This project awakened students' minds to many important environmental issues, to political controversies, and taught them how to truly make an impact in our democracy. While we await action from Snyder, the political pendulum swings in favor of strong stewardship of our Great Lakes in order to ensure their long-term health. Lansing owes the environmental community. Now, only time can tell if the Great Lakes will receive the care they deserve.